this is the fourth uh, in part of the video series on Adi Shankara and Omkareshwar. It's all in the context of the Statue of Oneness, which has been recently installed. The Statue of Adi Shankara, which has been recently installed at Omkareshwar. Now, in the previous video, uh, it was basically pointed out that there is no hard evidence with regard to uh, the connection between Adi Shankara and Omkareshwar, and neither was there any hard evidence about the antiquity of Omkareshwar. Now, in light of this, I wish to share some information about the, um, you know, uh, this, this this particular topic. And I, let me say this: this is the core. This is the core of the discussion. Very interesting. We are now entering what would we say the eye of the storm. This is the most interesting part of the discussion. And I request you just bear with me and you know follow along, please. Okay, because we are now first going to talk about the uh, antiquity of the area that is about Madhya Pradesh. Madhya Pradesh is one of the most culturally rich places. Well, it's got very ancient history uh, and culture uh, and monuments there. And let me just take, tell you about a few, few places. Okay, in the, in the prehistoric period, very, very early on, we have what is known as the Bimbetka rock shelter with uh, rock art and uh, you know caves, etc. It is not in our period of interest. That's why I'm not talking about it. And so I'll move on to the next set of, of monuments. Here you have the ancient uh, pillar, a pillar dedicated to Jagannath or Lord Krishna. And believe it or not, it was built, built by the Greek ambassador. Uh, at, at that point, uh, you, may, you may find this uh, surprising. But it was built by the Greek ambassador, Heliodorus, who built this particular um, this, this pillar which had a Garuda capital, which I mean a Garuda atop this. And there is also an inscription about this. And uh, this is, and he also praises the king of that place at that point. So you can imagine this is this dates back to the first decade, first decade of the second century BCE or you know uh, BC. Basically, this uh, is about 100 BC or so, one of the oldest monuments right? we have in India. Now, uh, in addition to that, once you come to the later period, there are these you know, very beautiful monuments. Okay? This is the uh, Gupta period. You have a, a, a set of caves uh, in Udaygiri, and this is one of the Vaishnava caves. So there are Vaishnava caves, Shaiva caves, Shakta caves, etc. And so this is the Vaishnava cave, at Udaygiri, and here you have, you know, the grand Varaha of Udaygiri being worshipped by uh, Adi Sesha. and you know you have various other depictions uh, here. Now, if this is about fourth, fifth century CE or AD, and this here on the right is the very great or grand Varaha from Iran, and here you have, you know, the various devis and devatas and rishis carved on this on this particular varaha this is one of you know another great about 5th 6th century uh, mon, uh, you know uh, monument there was actually an earlier temple here as well you all know that you know in the in the period you know predating this uh, pillar of uh, lord krishna you have the uh, sanchi stupa the, the big buddhist complex which is there in uh, sanchi and when you go to the medieval period, one of the most important places are, which was the capital of uh, Chakravarti Rajabhoja, right? A great king, a great warrior, and at the same time, one of the greatest scholars uh, that had been, um, uh, you know, there in India. He was written multiple texts, uh, a very great person, right? And then, of course, you have much, many, many more places, uh, Khajurao and other places. So very rich in terms of history. The ASI, the Archaeological Survey of India, lists for us, you know, the excavations that have been done in Madhya Pradesh since uh, independence. And there are about, you know, a couple of dozen of excavations that they have listed. And they have been done at various places in Madhya Pradesh. Unfortunately, Khandwa district and specifically Madhya Pradesh has been uh, sort of neglected. Right? Now, let's look at Omkarishu specifically. I personally believe, based on the fact that there's so much rich 
heritage and history at, at, at in Madhya Pradesh. Because of that, and my gut feel that Omkareshwar is a very ancient place. But you know, I have to accept that we just do not have the evidence today to support this claim. And in that, I agree with all of you. And I also agree that you know, my belief or somebody else's belief does not you know equate or translate to evidence. I accept um, uh, what whatever people have uh, conveyed to me. Basically, I have received a lot of feedback and a lot of questions recently from all of you, where you people have been asking, you know, why has a statue been built um, at, at Omkarishwar to Bhagavad Pada Shankara, what's the connection? And I understand all the queries that, you know, that I have received wherever I went, wherever, you know, I've uh, uh, spoken to people or met people, you know, otherwise there are others who have called me or messaged me. And I, and I understand uh, your questions. And that is why I put out a video saying, why Omkarishwar? However, I also agree with you that, you know, I understand your skepticism and I would like to say that it might, I agree with you that it might have been better if archaeological surveys and excavations had been conducted in parallel while the statue was being constructed in Omkarishwar, but that did not happen, okay? And so we had to sort of go about it backwards at Omkarishwar and I understand your skepticism, but I'm sure that I'm very optimistic that we can find the hard evidence there. Now, let me give you an example okay, of how we go about remedy the situation. This is uh, basically uh, Trichy. So I'm right now doing explorations around the, the, the uh, uh, city of uh, Tiruchirappalli or Trichy in Tamil Nadu. And I would say that I have found a, a footprint of Shankara uh, in that area. And by that, uh, I mean, and in an archaeological sense, I have found a footprint. Uh, so don't take that literally. Right. So what I have actually found is that, uh, you know, there are uh, there are numerous pieces of evidence in that area. This, for example, is a rock cut cave. Okay, another rock cut cave. Right. This is the lower rock cut cave in the Rockport Monument. And what you have is a cave that depicts the Shanmatha concept of uh, Adi Shankara. So uh, this is about uh, 8th, 9th century, uh, common era AD. And this is a Pandya structure, you know, Pandya dynasty, uh, uh, rock cut cave. And you have, this is the central, uh, this is one of the shrines. This is a shrine dedicated to uh, Shiva, right? And there are Dwarapalakas here. And exactly opposite that is the shrine of Vishnu. And the other, uh, uh, that is, um, uh, uh, the other deities are around this particular place, right? Now this, is basically the harmonization of the uh, Shaiva, Shakta, Vaishnava, the Saura or the uh, sun worship, um, the Ganapati or the Ganesha worship, and also Komaram or the worship of Skanda. Now, this is the harmonization Shankara brought about. And in that area, I found several other evidences. Inscriptions are there. There are images of um, Shankara in that area. There are also uh, you know, there are also, uh, you know, temples which, uh, you know, have claim close association uh, to Shankara. There are um, uh, hymns that are authored by him in that area. There's a lot, actually, uh, in and around Pritchi that I have found. So there is a footprint there. The same way at Omkarishwar, we have to basically go about looking for, uh, looking at the temples, the ruined, uh, the ruins, basically the loose sculptures and other things, actually go around, you know, conduct the surveys, find the, the information there and uh, examine them, get them stylistically. And using that information, we may be able to come get an idea at the uh, antiquity, why we may even find some images of Shankara and, uh, you know, associated deities at Omkareshwar during the survey. And I don't know exactly whether we can find a, a, a continuity sequence, but I think we'll definitely be able to find uh, the connection of uh, Shankara to Omkarishwar uh, through these uh, surface, surface and ground surveys. However, uh, we may also, also be able to get uh, some idea of the antiquity of Omkarishwar through this exercise. However, there is no, I don't think there is any, um, uh, any way to escape excavation. So we have to excavate, 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 right? 
Um, and I would say that, you know, we should be inspired by the work done by the founder of modern archaeology, Dr. H. D. Sankalia, who was also the founder of my alma mater, Deccan College, right? One of the greatest archaeologists of this country, right? Dr. Sankalia proved through his surveys and his excavations that Maheshwar, okay, is the ancient Maheshwar. Um, Maheshwar is in Kargon district, that adjacent district of Kandwa, and it is about 65 kilometers downstream from Omkarishwar. Now, this is very important from the, uh, from the context of Shankara. 65 kilometers away is where uh, Mahishmati is where uh, Mandana Mishra should have been, you know, where we should locate Mandana Mishra. If we have, you know, excavations and surveys done 65 kilometers away, I mean, that's a very great boon for us. Isn't it? Now, Professor Santalia was, you know, brilliant, right? Uh, no question about it. Now, this is the report, you know, of his uh, excavations there. Now, he realized that you know, the, the um, Mahishmati, Maheshwar, you know, he may not be able to get, he did a lot of excavations there, but he realized that the opposite bank of the Narmada would be a lot more fruitful, there's a lot more potential. So he excavated at Nanda I mean, this is brilliant, right? This is how uh, one has to go about it, right? Uh, and you know, India at that time was a, 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 a budding economy in 1952-53. And so, he went to Mumbai and collected funds from private manufacturers to actually conduct these excavations. So, I mean, I would say that this is the greatest inspiration for us because he has found us the place of Sureshwara. Right? Uh, now, it is not that, you know, uh, as I said earlier, Madhya Pradesh has been, uh, you know, neglected as far as excavations go. I showed you that there is a list on the internet from ASI. Another person from the Alma Mater, Right from Deccan College, Professor V.S. Vakantra surveyed all around Madhya Pradesh, right, and he has excavated at several places. There is a there is a, a tribute uh, paper to him in this, which I have given the link. Fortunately, okay, unfortunately, uh, Omkarishwar and Kandwa has been neglected, okay, and uh, you may wonder why. Uh, it is possibly because of the rocky outcrop, you know, in that particular place. That is, uh, you know, Omkarishwar is pretty uh, a, a pretty rocky place, and you know, it, it's it's basically near impossible uh, excavating in a in a rocky place. But that should not uh, deter us, you know. That should not deter us. So what do we do? Uh, we have to basically first study the Govinda Bhagavad Pada K from an Indological standpoint. We, from a standpoint of you know the pillars, the um uh, the, the images, the older images which are there, which are there, that has to be studied. Uh, now, uh, the other thing that has been done is a set of explorations and excavations have to be done in Omkarishwar first. You know, there is what what I understand. There is a labyrinth, means a set of caves below Omkarishwar, which were accidentally discovered. Omkarishwar temple. Uh, which were discovered when the large staircase adjacent to the Omkarishwar temple was being built, right? So we have to, you know, research those caves and also the Govinda Bhagavad Pada cave. If at all possible, you know, could we excavate, you know, somewhere there if the floor is not, uh, you know, rocky, right? That is something that we need to figure out. Now, we also need to figure, you know, excavate uh, near the uh, Govindeshwar temple, which is, you know, in the Koti Tirth, very close to um, the Govinda Bhagavad Pada cave, and here we need to uh, put trial pits and you know basically excavate full scale near that area. There will be other places at Omkareshwar, I'm sure, and in Khandwa district that we have to excavate in order to understand the antiquity of the area. This is at the very least that we have to do. Now we would be basically you know looking at all the loose sculptures, the ruins, the temples all around, and those which are above the ground. We have to architecturally and stylistically date them. The reason we have to do it is basically find the history of Omkarishwar. That's precisely the objective. Now, same way, there will be finds that we will, uh, you know, unearth uh, under the ground. So, pot shirts, some brick structures, etc., etc. Those also we will have to, um, 
you know, the important ones from there, we'll also have to date, again, to find the, the, the history of Omkarisha. So when we combine all these pieces of information, and my gut feel is we will find some direct evidence uh, and also some associated evidence with regard to Shankara uh, in and around Omkarisha and in Khandwa district. And once we, we have all this information, we should be able to understand the antiquity, you know, very firmly say, talk about the antiquity of Omkarisha and also about the uh, connection uh, to Adi Shankara. Now, how do we actually go about it? I think that, you know, the MP government, uh, you know, they have done a fantastic job so far. And they should, I think, complete the exercise. They should encourage collaboration between their state archaeology department and the persons researching Adi Shankara. This is, I think, critical at this stage, right? The funding, there is a money that is required for these surveys and excavations at Omkarishwar and in Kandwa. There will be a tiny fraction, tiny fraction of the cost of the Statue of Oneness and this proposed museum. Now, the MP government, I think, should fund, should put the money for this archaeological initiative so that, you know, the questions that all of you have, I mean, there's so many questions coming. Why Omkar issue or why Omkar issue? I mean, that all that, you know, we should be able to answer. I'm very confident we'll be able to answer it. At this stage, I cannot answer, right? But we will be able to once these surveys are uh, completed. Now, the MP government can actually, uh, you know, be the pioneer, okay, in this exercise in launching what is called the National Shankara Mission. That is, it is an activity that I am proposing where we have collaboration between state, state archaeology department, the Archaeological Survey of India, and Shankara researchers throughout the country to find out about Adi Shankara at this time. One individual or a group of people cannot do this. This has to be done by the nation at large. And MP government can start within their state, they can start this activity. And why so? Just like Adi Shankara began his endeavors from Madhya Pradesh, the same way the National Shankara Mission can also begin from Madhya Pradesh. And this will be an even bigger feather on the cap of the Madhya Pradesh government, so I believe. And in the sense, if we do this, we would have come a full circle. Bhagavad Pada began after meeting his guru at um, Omkarishwar, and in Khandwa, same way, we will also begin at Khandwa and, you know, make a big, big, big contribution to Bhagavad Pada and the National Shankar Mission. Now, there is also another issue that will arise. Once we have completed all these surveys and excavations, a large number of materials would have been found both above the ground, below the ground, etc. Question is, what do you do with all these materials? That presents an exciting possibility as well. And this we will discuss in the next video. Thank you very much.